All right, welcome. This evening we're going to do an introduction to APIs, leveraging syndicated data. Who knows what syndicated means? Who does not know what syndicated means? All right. Basically, if you own content and you allow somebody else to present it, either as their own or giving you credit, that's syndication. So with an API, say you own weather data, you let other people take that data and put it on their website, they're syndicating the weather data. So any data that you can access, either for free or for a fee, and do what you want with it, that's syndicated data. Okay, so if I have my own data and I send it to my own WordPress site, that is not syndication because I'm just... It's not legally syndication. It here and throwing it up on the right. Board. It's not legally syndication, but from a technological standpoint, you could use that word and a coder would go, oh, I know what you're doing. Excellent. Okay. Yes. So API stands for Application Programming Interface. Anybody not seen Ready Player One, the movie? Okay. So Ready Player One takes place in 2045, and most of the world puts on goggles to enter the internet, and they wear gloves and suits to feel things and all of that kind of stuff. They interact with the world digitally like that. So in the movie, they need to go to the library to find some information. So in their little 3D world, they go to this virtual library. Now, it's virtual. It's not like a bunch of physical books you can search through yourself. There's actually no way for humans to understand what's in the library. So this guy we see right here is provided. He's a, an android, a robot. You can see his arms right here are, are mechanical. And he says, what can I get for you? And you say, I want this information. And he says, come with me. And because it's virtual, everything's just in the next room. So they walk into the next room. And there's your video, there's your book, there's your text, there's whatever you want. He is the API for the library. He is a simple interface, an easy interface to a complicated thing. Now, it doesn't always have to be complication that requires an API. It could be permissions. So I have a database full of information. I want you to have that information. I want you to be able to query it and do weird things with it, but not actually give you access to it, which is counterintuitive. So an API handles the authentication and allows you to have almost unfettered access to the data without actually accessing the database software itself. So you, in the end, don't care if it's MySQL or Oracle or Microsoft Access. You don't care. The API is a wall between you and the back end. It's a black box. And you just say, this is what I want. And it says, okay, I'm going to give it to you. So here are some examples. RapidAPI.com actually is more than just weather. Ha, it worked. Um, so RapidAPI.com actually hosts a number of APIs. No, I'm good with what I have. Um, so they list the best weather APIs for what you want. So this is really interesting. Open Weather Map is best for the forecast, but WeatherBit is better for alerts and forecast. And AccuWeather has conditions and images. Dark Sky does historical data, and Weather 2020 does long-range weather forecast. So say you want to do um, a blog post about weather in your county over the last 100 years. You could relatively easily hit their API and make a list of temperatures per year for 100 years and make a little chart with Google Charts because you just dump the data right into Google Charts as a string of common to limited numbers. Um, cool stuff like that. Uh, the CIA World Factbook, geopolitical data. Oh, is it going to... There we go. Anybody not know that there is a CIA World Factbook? The CIA maintains this. Every year there's a new version and it tells you everything you want to know geopolitically about countries, all the countries. 
How many miles of paved road are in a given country? How many miles of dirt road are in a given country? Tons of detail. It's amazing. Some genius, I don't know how, I can't even conceive how this happened. He, he wrote a script to scrape the data and put it into a database. This is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages. And he, he got it all in there. Um, and actually, it's not in a database. It's in one giant JSON blob. So, as an API, it's on GitHub. You can, if you wish, hit his JSON file on GitHub and query it, or you can just download it and have it locally. Um, which brings us back to your syndication question. Mm -hmm. It's not actually, if you, if you download the file and run it locally, it's sort of syndicated. They give you permission to use it, but it's on your server, so you're not really going anywhere. Um, it's really amazing. If you're like, this is a boon for college kids doing any kind of geopolitical stuff. Did you find anybody? No. All right. Um, next, the Joshua Project does anthropological data. Similar, oh, this is really zoomed. <laughs> Similar to the CIA World Factbook, it lists tons and tons of data, but about people groups. So languages. Um, so it will tell you how many different languages are spoken in Yemen. And then you can say, okay, now, in how many countries are there Yemenese people? Where have they gone in the world? Um, all that stuff. So if you're studying people, right, here's your database. Big commerce. I work here. We're doing something called headless e-commerce. So it used to be, if you wanted a store with us, you'd go to our site, you sign up, boom, you have a website, and you can only do what we allow. But now we're offering all of our functionality over an API so you can, and we released a WordPress plugin based on that API. So now within WordPress, you can say, go get me on my products, boom, show them in a grid on this page, there you are. Make it so I can click to add to cart, there you are. Tell the database back there that something's in my cart so it doesn't get bought out from under me over in real time over the API. Go to the checkout, check out all that stuff, and all of the heavy lifting is on the server. So all of the customer data, all of the order data, all that stuff is stored somewhere else. So if your site gets hacked, nothing to steal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except to the API on your servers. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, I've always been a big fan of this day in history stuff. Um, Wikipedia has this feature, but it's not in an API. It's just on their page. The guy who made this page scrapes it every day. Uh, you know, he probably doesn't have to scrape it every day. Um, it doesn't change that much. Um, but then you can go get this stuff. I used to have a widget on my WordPress site that was today in history that came from history.com. Uh, it was not done via API. It was horrible JavaScript blob or something. Um, and then WordPress. This is fascinating. WordPress itself has an API. So... Let's see, HeroPress.com. So here's a website, HeroPress.com. If you go to slash WP slash JSON, or hyphen JSON, there is basically everything, not just on this site, but about this site. You can see what plugins I have installed, all that stuff. Unless you turn it off, this is available for every WordPress site in the world. 35% of the internet is offering this data to you. Um, you can turn stuff off. So say you have some private content on your site. You can either programmatically, or there are plugins to say, you know, just disallow this on the, on the API. Um, so it's not... Te technically a security problem because this is all public data. Um, 
it makes some people squeamish to go through here and see everything about their site, every setting, every everything is in here. It's a little spooky. Um, so those are some examples of whoop, of APIs. So they're all out there. All the data is there. Uh, in this day and age, almost always what you get back is JSON, which is JavaScript Object Notation. It's basically a very, very fancy comma delimited file. Um, you can, it used to be XML, and so many APIs will allow you to throw in a flag to say, I want XML. Um, really legacy APIs that have been around for 20 years will often have a variety of other formats. But usually it's JSON. Um, so then, how do you get this stuff? What do you do with it? There is a function in WordPress called WC WP Safe Remote Get. There's also one called WP Remote Get. Don't use that one, it's not safe. Um, so I just established a variable run WP safe remote get and put in the URL provided to me by the API. Um, and you know, I can show you how I got that one. That one's from the Joshua project. So Joshua project version two sample calls. So here's all people groups in a specific country. And you just go to this URL. Uh, I don't know what Raj3 stands for. I helped him build this API, but I still don't know what Raj3 stands for. So YM is Yemen, and then uh, this is a, a demo API key. You should sign up for your own. Um, all unreached people groups in a specific country, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the weather one can actually be quite complicated, and you need to send a, a wide variety of functions. And so some of it is in the URL, so you end up with a long URL, but some of it's actually in headers. And uh, WP remote get can take another variable after the URL to that allows you to set headers. So you can put in an authentication header with a username and password or an API key or whatever. Um, and usually if you want something other than JSON, you also use a header. Use the application type and say JSON or XML or whatever. Um, so the, this is the really simple version of how to get data. Uh, so this just comes back as raw JSON. I want to walk you through an actual, oh, where'd it go? There we go. An actual chunk of code that really does stuff. Everybody see that all right? All right. So this is just one function, get people groups by country. Start off by declaring an output car, var, um, and then I want it to I want it so that you can put in your URL a country name or abbreviation so that you could get data about Yemen or Germany or whatever you want. So I test for a get variable, which is after the question mark in a in a URL. Uh, if it's empty, I just declare I want Yemen. So if you don't ask you're just going to get Yemen. Otherwise, the country is going to be whatever you typed in here. And now, I'm going to start using transients. And we're going to talk about that a little bit because it uses an API. In WordPress, a transient is a piece of data that gets cached for a short period of time. It's transient data. It's, it's not permanent. It's going to move along. Caching in WordPress is a big, ugly, complicated thing. And there are a whole bunch of functions, and you have to wrap your head around it. Somebody said, I want to make this simple. So they made an API called the Transients API. So all you have to do is say, I want this thing, and I'm going to name it this thing. Save it. And the whole Transients API will say, are you running a caching layer? Yes, use it. No? OK, store it in the database. Oh, you don't have a database? Store it over there instead. It figures it out. It's beautiful. 
So this is another example of a, of a different kind of API. It's still a simple, easy interface to something complicated. But this one isn't about getting remote data. It's about saving local data. So I'm coming up with a name for my country data, and then I'm appending dollar country so that my Yemen transient doesn't step on my German transient. And then I try to go get it. I say, hey, I want, I want this data. If it works properly, then I'm going to skip this whole next section. So if I have a local copy that from the last time I tried to do this, I just use it. If I don't, if this country data is not an object, here's my WP remote get, safe remote get. Go get the data. Then I save it in a transient so that next time I already have it. Um, and I'm saving it. This is a PHP constant called month in seconds. Anybody know how many seconds are in a month? A lot. Me neither. That's why I use this variable. <laughs> um, you can do hour. No, you can do minute in seconds, hour in seconds, day in seconds, week in seconds, month in seconds, and year in seconds. Um, and you have to decide every time you make one of these how long this should live. Data about Yemen is not going to change that often. And so I'm going to save this data for a month. And so when Bob comes in and hits my website and says, I want to know about Yemen, it's not hitting the Joshua project. It's getting it out of my database. So, yeah. Uh, so if I say, if it's not an object, go get the stuff and save it for the next time. So what you get back when you do this request is actually the results of a web request. So you're getting HTTP headers and HTTP footers, and it's telling you about caching and all this stuff. You don't care. You want the body. So WordPress also comes with a function called WP Remote Retrieve Body, which just pulls out the one variable that holds the data. So now I started with all country data, which was the whole request. Now I have country body, which is just the data. And this is where some real magic happens. So what I got back was JSON, which is one very, very long text string filled with semicolons and curly braces and whatnot. PHP has a function called JSON decode, and it can convert it into either uh, an object or an array. And then it's just a PHP array. And if you know how to deal with arrays in PHP, you know how to deal with everything that's going to happen next. So print out the country name. I just print country and then, oh, sorry, right here in the country body array, there's a, an a, array element called data. And the first element in it is country. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Country is an element in the first element in data. It gets confusing. But then I can just print dollar country. Then, also included in the API results is how many you got. Um, and so I just print that out. Blah, 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 people groups. Um, I wrap it in a, an escaping array, absent, because it should be a number, um, so that people can't put in nefarious stuff. Then this is really cool. So I have a very complex array here. This is all the data about Yemen. All I want to know is peep name in country. So WordPress has a cool function called array or WP list pluck, where you give it an array, no matter how complicated, and you say, I want this one thing out of every item in the array. And it gives it to you in one simple array of just the one column. Numbers, results. So then I start an unordered list. I loop over my people groups, I make list items, I print group, close my unordered list, and that's it. Um, and I can show you, oh, so then I print, I return my output, and I made a short code for WordPress. Um, so I will show you how this works. Oh. 
There we go. Is it running? Ha! That server might not be running. Oh, it is. And there it is. Okay, so this was my my very first request. Super raw headers. Um, there's the date I requested, content type, JSON, content length, 6,021 bytes. Um, served by Laravel. Fascinating. Not cached. Gzipped. All that stuff. Comes from Cloudflare. I don't care. Right here is the body. And I'm just going to scroll to the right here a little bit. And I'm not going to go all the way to the end, but you get the idea about how long that is. Whoop. Ha. And if you three finger swipe sideways on a Mac, you go back. There's my HTTP results. All that stuff. I don't care about any of that stuff. All I want is the body. So I run it again. And there's the body. It's still really long. Still, this is what JSON looks like. Uh, there's meta. Inside meta is pagination. Inside pagination is the total count, total pages, current page, limit 100. All that stuff. So then, question? Yeah, and what is it that got gzip together? Oh, just the output of this from the server. You know, you can gzip, set gzip in Apache. Yeah. I'm familiar with GZIP. And okay. I'm familiar with Apache. Yeah, you can you can tell any web server to GZIP the contents of the request when they send it, and then the browser will unzip it before presenting it. Oh. And it can reduce page size by eighty percent. Okay. Dramatic speed increase. Um. So. Ah, country. Yeah. Un, uh, un -zip it on, yeah. On so I took the body and I converted it to an array. And look, same data. So there's meta and then there's data. So uh, remember data zero country? Right there's Yemen, that's what I'm printing. Um, so this is, that was one people group. Here's another one and another one and so on and so forth. Then I used WP list pluck and said, I only want the people groups. Roop. And that's what I got. Interestingly, def is a people group. Uh, so there are 28 people groups in Yemen. So then I turn off all my reporting. And that is my output. Remember, I printed country, Yemen, and number, number, people groups. And here they are ordered alphabetically. Now, each of these people groups at the Joshua Project has its own ID. And it's in that array. So I could have made all of these a link. So you could click on Arab Egyptian and find out everywhere in the world that Egyptian Arabs live suddenly you have a web application. Um, there was something else I was going to say, and I don't remember what it was. So, so this is an introduction to APIs. What I wanted you to see is the power. Kind of a, a little tiny slice of what's available. There are thousands, hundreds of thousands of APIs available. Um, and they're just accessible to you. Um, anybody ever use Eventbrite? Eventbrite has an API. You can use it to go get a list of all your events, either the ones you're doing or the ones you signed up to go to, and print them on your website. If you authenticate, you can actually buy tickets. You could write your own Eventbrite, Eventbrite UI and make your own system, which a large enough company might actually want to do for their internal employees and they would want to pay you hundreds of thousands of dollars to do this. Um, 
So brainstorm with me. What's something out there that you think would be cool if it had an API? Finding my lost stuff. <laughs> What's that? Finding my lost stuff. Finding your lost stuff. Okay, so ever heard of a tile? Please hold. Tile keys. Find your keys, wallet, and phone with tile. So this, this thing right here is about this big, fits in a key ring, works over Bluetooth, and if you pay enough, I think Wi-Fi. Um, and your account has an API. So you can literally find your lost stuff via the Tile API. My daughter's asking for these for Christmas. Um, QuickBooks has an API. If you want to find out anything about your accounting, you can get the data. I don't know, make a mobile app, make your own QuickBooks app or something. Anything you want. Um, Amazon has an API. Alexa has an API. So you can build something on the web. This thing I built, you could make it look up a country, find out the people group, connect to an Alexa in somebody else's house, and say it out loud. Yeah, it's crazy. And terrifying. And terrifying. Um, what was my variable name? Anybody remember? Country equals, I'm going to guess Germany is DE. Nope, I don't think country was my variable name. Oh, yeah, it is. So I have an error in my code somewhere. Oh, DE is probably not Germany. Yeah, I know, but... Boy, what else? What, think of a... Maybe UK? I'll bet you US works. Yeah, United Kingdom. They have 105. So that was the other part. I forgot to show off how you can change... What country you're looking at? 488 people groups in the U.S. Abnaki Penobscot. That's cool. Um, so other APIs. Uh, well, there's the WordPress API. You can scrape anybody's website in the whole world and do whatever you want with it, assuming they have a Creative Content license on their website, I guess. Um, what else has a good API? What's that? You can do backups. Oh, you can do backups. Yeah, you'd only be backing up your data. You wouldn't save your yeah, your theme so, uh, or your plugins or anything. Yeah, if you don't trust the developer. Right. Go to backup on your own machine. Well, people now are doing a lot of... Yourself. Yeah, you yeah. Do a paranoia copy once a month or something. People are doing a lot of headless WordPress these days where they build the website in React, getting the data from WordPress. Mm -hmm. So the client updates their blog in WordPress where there's a nice GUI but the front end is not WordPress at all. Oh. Uh, it can be anything. Mobile app, who knows? Whatever. You said something too. I was just thinking out loud. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Google Analytics has a great API. Is that how they just made the thing for? For 10up. For 10up. 10up just released a cool, oh, so what's it called? And up Google. Yeah. I'm surprised Google's not finding it. Site kit. So TenUp built this thing for Google called Site Kit, and you install it in WordPress, and it it does this kind of stuff all over the API. Oh, so TenUp just released a new thing for a development of plugins for WordPress? What is it called? I forget what it is. I saw it on its little uh, Twitter release. Hannah, you said something? Uh, 
Oh, yes. Distribute. Right. Oh, I don't want that one. I want that one. Oh, I remember some other good examples. Two. One of them is Slack. Slack integrates with tons of stuff. Google Docs, all that stuff, all over the API. Um, have you ever heard of If This Then That? If This Then That works exclusively over APIs. <coughs> Zapier. Zapier works exclusively over APIs. So with Zapier, you can say, if you complete a sale in Easy Digital Downloads, take the total and put it in cell G9 on a Google spreadsheet at this particular URL. And it will update your spreadsheet for you, which is amazing. All over the APIs. Yeah. Gravity Forms, I think, has its own API in addition to talking to other APIs. Um, most really large WordPress plugins have their own API. WooCommerce does, Easy Digital Downloads does, um, Gravity Forms does. Uh, who else would? Oh, you know what? I think I know why. That's an excellent question. Um, I will tell you in just a second. I wanted to. Is it here? Yeah. Let's go to the top. Boop. Namespaces. So this is not. Uh, this is not proof that an API exists. But this is an indication that an API exists for a Kismet, Jetpack, WordPress.com, Yoast, Postmatic, and WordPress itself. Um, so Easy Digital Downloads offers an API because they have a mobile app for store owners. So a store owner can pull up their phone and say, I've done this much in sales this month. And it's just talking to the website. It's basically a, a web page on their phone, but it's talking over the API. Um, WooCommerce, interestingly, is toying with the idea of headless WooCommerce. So it would be like headless WordPress, headless WooCommerce together on a React site, which is sort of what BigCommerce is doing, except you would have to run the WooCommerce instance yourself on, I don't know, uh, where does Chris Lemma work? On Liquid Web, because you'd want tons of guts behind it. Whereas BigCommerce runs our own servers on Google Cloud. Um, so there's a mobile app for WooCommerce so that store owners can see their stuff. Um, Gravity Forms. I don't remember. What is Gravity Forms? Does they have their own API? What does it do? Uh, okay. Okay. Um, let me get this back. All right. Um, I don't have a whole lot more. From here on, it would be just discussion, brainstorming, questions, whatever. Um, if you have questions about APIs, let me know. I'm, ho I'm hoping I opened a window in your brain and now you're going to be laying awake tonight thinking, boy, now I could do this. <laughs> so basically, APIs eliminate any need for reporting functions that a plugin would have. Why? For example, you were mentioning that uh, a store owner yep. doesn't know what his monthly sales are. Yep. He doesn't ever have to log in to the back end of WordPress or even check right. any of his other things. So that by example like big commerce or woocommerce say right here's an api that basically eliminated all of your reporting functionality yes and no what's interesting and is that, that that's what i was seeing a very simplified right. thing of saying i just want yep. to report boom i don't need all that extra stuff right but not everybody has it on their phone or wants it on their phone right so they're going to look still in the website but what's really key there is that the reporting on the website should also be hitting the api so that when you make a change, it affects the mobile app and the website. 
um, at Big Commerce, we've been doing e-commerce for 10 years now, and everything is totally custom functions. And the API is what other people use. And something we were starting on about a year ago now is making it so that even internally, we use the API so that when an API change happens, it happens both for internal and your WordPress site and your React store and your mobile app all across the board. Um, and then we're not duplicating functionality. Somebody comes and says, hey, I need this thing. We don't build it in this weird custom PHP, Python mashup and also for the API. We just do it for the API and then internally they, they do whatever they want. Okay. Um, so. You're sort of right. It gets rid of the need for a custom reporting app. Mm -hmm. You still want a reporting app, but it should come from the API. Gotcha. Well, multiple namespaces. What about multiple namespaces? Uh I can't think of a reason why not. What would you do with that? Why would you want that? Sure. Yeah. So using this URL as an example here, you could theoretically just put in a different namespace. And on the API side, it does whatever magic it needs to. All right. I think we're done. Thank you very much for coming.